In my video on why Sketchbook Pro is such a great free drawing software, I very briefly showed an image that I'd drawn in 2015 versus how I'd drawn that same character in 2019. And then when I posted it on Instagram, I also showed how I'd drawn the character in 2017. So you could see a progression of me getting better. And from doing that, it made me think about this old drawing that I'd done a couple times a few years ago of Spider-Bat or Bat Spider, whatever you want to call this mashup of Spider-Man and Batman that I drew in 2016, then almost exactly a year later, I drew it again and had gotten a bunch better. So now, in 2019, I thought, what if I draw that again? How much better is it going to look now? The answer, hopefully, is a lot better. And I know this is me jumping right back into the Spider-Man well immediately after drawing a whole bunch of spider sonas in the last episode, but... Okay, I, I don't really have an excuse. Drawing Spider-Man's just great. Want to do something Batman related? This seemed like a fun video. And I feel like people never really complain when I do lots of Spider-Man drawings anyway, so... Let's draw this Spider-Bat or Bat-Spider or whatever and see how much I've improved. Now to warm up, I drew a whole bunch of common Spider-Man sort of poses, trying to figure out the basic idea of what I wanted to do, and I know I want to do something along the lines of this one, right here. This isn't the exact pose, I'll figure it out a bit better when I've decided the composition, but let's go with something like this and get into the rough thumbnail sketches. Now this is the part of my video that I often come to where I'm gonna bang on a little bit about why thumbnail sketches are so important. I decided going into this video that I was going to do five thumbnail sketches at least more if I needed to. Because as I always say, if you're gonna spend multiple hours on a project, you wanna make sure that you really like the composition and the pose that you're gonna be working on for that long. I ended up going with this one, at least for this first drawing. Now you can see on my screen that I brought up a whole bunch of reference images. I brought up the two old images of this character that I drew. Then I pulled up a drawing of Batman drawn by Greg Capullo, who's my favorite Batman artist, and a drawing of Spider-Man by Humberto Ramos, who's my favorite Spider-Man artist. Just so I had some references, and this image definitely does end up leaning more Humberto Ramos, and I'm pretty happy with that. I, I, I really like his shape for drawing Spider-Man kind of poses, but you'll also notice that, you know, you've seen the thumbnail and you're like, hey, wait a minute, this isn't the Spider-Man that you draw in the thumbnail. Well, I end up actually doing two versions of this character in this, because the first one, while I kinda like it, I'm not totally satisfied with. But, you know, we're gonna stick with this one for now. Here's what the rough sketch turned out like. I was pretty happy with it, so I went and took a snack break. You know how I'm always eating peanut butter with chocolate chips in it in my videos? Well, if you just add an egg, and some sugar, and bake it for eight minutes, you got cookies. Mm. Okay, okay, back to drawing. Now even into the inking stage, I was still really liking how this was going. I liked the pose I'd worked out, I, like, everything just seemed like it was going well. But the problem was, I still hadn't planned out this image well enough in advance. And that's more apparent in the coloring stage, because with the inking, I, I liked what I was doing here. I'd planned on using more blacks in my images, because I've been doing that a bit more lately, and I really like how it just ups the contrast and makes the character pop more. And if I don't do as much black in the background, but do a bit more black and high contrast stuff on the character, they stand out from the background more. And I was just, Loving all that. I really like the inking and everything, but it's just I, I hadn't planned out this image well enough because when I get to the coloring stage, what I'd wanted to do was something along the lines of FCO Placentia's coloring, who's the colorist for the Batman New 52 run I've mentioned that I really like. I was talking about FCO Placentia's coloring in my Illustrator reacting to good and bad comic book art video, and so I wanted to use that sort of really bright and vibrant yellow and pink background on this character, but I also wanted to give this character a red suit initially, and I hadn't really thought about the fact that the reason that yellow vibrant background works so well on for a Batman comic in FCO Placentia's work is because Batman has a very gray and blue suit that stands out well against that kind of background. The Even, even going with a darker red for this Spider-Man-Batman mashup didn't really make the character pop out from the background enough. And then there was just other stuff like how the buildings, even though I added a bit of texture to them to differentiate them from the, the character, I, I made them initially too similar of a color to the actual character, 
and so he wasn't standing out enough from the buildings. He was popping a decent amount from the background, but I didn't have the red in there that I'd wanted. So as I was in the coloring stage, I could just feel this one kind of falling apart on me. And I like the shading well enough. That's probably my favorite part of this. But I ended up having to change so many things last minute. You can see I was just doing random tweaks to try and make everything stand out from each other. And then in a last ditch attempt, I pulled the character out from the background, which I'd drawn them on separate layers so I could move them around. And that ends up making it work okay, but I still wasn't totally thrilled. So here's how this one ended up turning out. I mean, it's not bad, but it's not great either. You know what? I'm gonna try this one more time. Now to do this drawing right, the first thing that I had to do was design the suit in advance. And I definitely should have done that in the first place. I was a bit too cocky. And for this one, I was thinking a little bit less superior Spider-Man suit like I'd been thinking in the last one. I was thinking a little bit more Miles Morales and Batman Beyond almost. And I came up with this, which I really, really liked. And then I decided to also go with a different thumbnail sketch, even though I liked that first one. I decided to go with this one, change it up a little bit. And right off the bat into this drawing, I was just so much more confident, not having to think about designing the suit as I went and knowing that I had a design that I liked meant I could just focus on making sure everything else was right, that all the anatomy was working the way I wanted it to, and I could also focus a little bit more on doing the buildings better. And I, I did them almost a little bit more scratchy, and I didn't draw them on a separate layer this time, so I could make them feel like the whole piece was integrated a little bit more. It gave me less flexibility later on, and I might have wanted to scale up the character a little bit, but I'm still glad I went with this. And that kind of brings me to why I wanted to do this piece in the first place. I mean, part of it, I just thought it would be fun, and I like the idea of drawing Spider-Man-Batman mashup, but I... I... I'm not good at drawing buildings, and I don't like drawing buildings, which is why I wanted to draw buildings, which sounds weird, but what I mean is, like, in comparison, I used to really hate drawing hands, and I still have a bit of a hard time with them, and that was why I didn't like them. I was really terrible at drawing them, but I kind of just grinded through practicing and practicing and practicing and practicing until I got good at them, and now I genuinely like drawing hands a lot of the time, because I can do more interesting poses with them, because I've practiced enough that I'm decent at drawing them. And so I'm hoping that the same kind of thing is going to happen with buildings, because presumably a year from now, I'm going to draw this piece again. And just in general, I want to draw superhero comics, and I need to be able to do buildings to do that, because a lot of the stories I want to tell take place in cities. And so, a year from now when I do this again, I know that I'll want to be a lot better at drawing the environment, just like how I got a lot better at drawing the characters. Like this character, I like it way more than those previous ones, obviously. I love the coloring on this piece, but I want to feel that improvement from buildings. So doing this just encourages me to practice more over the next year, something I'm bad at, and hopefully, Eventually, like this time next year, I won't only be good at it, but I'll like drawing them. That's the hope anyway. Here's how this one turned out. You know what? Looking at both of them side by side, I think I was initially too hard on this one. They kind of just look like different rendering styles of my style. Like this one feels like Something I would draw, but a bit more cartoony, and this one feels like something I'd draw, but a bit more comic booky. And I like a lot of things about both of them. It's pretty apparent that I need to work on my buildings, because the buildings I drew are pretty boring. But that's something I'll work on for the next year. I'll draw this again next year, and see how much better my buildings have become. But let me know, which do you like better? Bat Spider, or Spider Bat? Bat Spider, Spider Bat. Let me know in the comments. Also, Monday's episode may or may not be some more fight animations, so get excited for that. But besides that, I'm Christian Pearson, this is Popcross Studios, home of the nerdiest art videos on YouTube, and that's all for today. I'll see you all on Monday. Goodbye.